Okay, let's have a look at this example of aluminium bromide reacting with chlorine. Going to give aluminium chloride plus bromine. Now you heard that right, that was al aluminium bromide plus chlorine reacting to give aluminium chloride plus bromine. Okay, so as before, let's, let's write these out. So we've got aluminium there, we've just got one of those. Do bromine next. Three of them. And two chlorines. I'll just give us a bit of space in case we need to write some more things out. That's on the left hand side. And on the right hand side we've got aluminium. And let's stick to the bromines on that level. So we put bromines there. We've got two of them now. And chlorines, we've got three. Okay, it's clearly a mismatch. We're all right for aluminium. Bromines, we seem to have lost one, and chlorines, we seem to have gained one. So that's what that's the beauty of these um, balanced equations, really. When you start doing them, because you realise that um, you know things are disappearing and things are being gained. So just looking at it, when you react something, you think you just use one equivalent of one thing and another equivalent of another. I know that sounds confusing, but I know what I mean. Okay, so. In order to balance this equation, we really need to sort out either bromines or chlorines. And in this case, I always go back to the beginning. So I try and sort out chlorines. I'm going to use a different colour pen because it's, it's quite colourful. This. So let's see if I can do this. Well, the easiest thing to do would be to add another chlorine. That would give me three. And again, we get into that issue of multiplying by fractions, and that's not good. So we're getting to the stage where we need to double things up again. Now if we double things up, if I put two chlorines there, it's going to give four and it's going to be out of sync here, isn't it? So I have to somehow think of a relationship between two and three. Now, the easiest thing to do would be to multiply this by three and this by two. Now, that sounds a bit confusing, but that would really get them in sync because if you have two if you have 3 times 2, that's 6, and if you have 2 times 3, that's 6 as well. So that's what I'd, I'd do. I'd look at the relationship between what's starting and what's ending, and what kind of number I can link between the two. And I can actually multiply 1 by 3 and 1 by 2. So let's go and do that. I'll just rub out this. Let's see if that theory works for a start. I'm still only looking at the chlorines. I'm only interested in chlorine at the, at the moment. If I multiply this one by 3, and I'll just put a 3 there, you should all be familiar with that, it's 3 times chlorine now. If I do 3, that's 3 lots of chlorine molecules, and that looks like this. Okay, that's 6 chlorines. If I multiply that by 3, then I'll have to multiply this by 2 to give us 6, won't I? That's, that's pretty straightforward, so that'll be another CL. CL, CL. Okay, chlorines are balanced now, but now aluminium's not balanced because remember, if I've added two uh, aluminium chloride molecules to this side, well, I've added one extra, but I've now got two, then I've got to sort out aluminium as well. I can't leave that behind, so I've got to add another aluminium, and that's for these chlorines. Okay, so we've got another aluminium chloride in there. If I'm adding another aluminium to this side, then I've got to go back to this side and add another aluminium. Let's have a look at this then. Now we've just sorted this out slightly. We've not done this aluminium yet. I'm backtracking a little bit. We've got the same kind of situation. We've got a three bromines and a two bromines, and we've got to find a common number that they um, are factors of, if you will. So if we multiply that by 2, that will sort out the aluminium, and it's also a common factor of that bromine there. So let's put a 2 there, let's see if this works. What does that give us? Well, that balances the aluminiums. That's good. I wanted that. But I've now got 6 bromine, so let's add them in. If I've got 6 bromines on this side, I'm hoping I'll have 6 bromines on this side. In order to get 6 
on this side, all I need to do is use that common number again. 3 times 2 should give us 6. 2 times 3, in that case, give us 6. So let's let's do that. We've now got three lots of bromine. That's one molecule, that's one molecule, and that's the last molecule. And that's six. So as you can see, that is now balanced, that is now balanced, and now the chlorine's balanced. And the key to that, so that's all, all balanced, the key to that was finding common numbers and common factors for some of the elements. So something that looked complicated at first and give us complex numbers could actually be resolved just by having a quick look at the relationship there. We've got this here, the two there, we've got three there, and the common factor would be to multiply this by two, that number two, and this one, this side, by that number three there. Now that's all right if you've only got one chlorine compound on that side etc and one bromine on that side and stuff like that. If you've got that then this kind of uh, system works. I'll just undo those last arrows. Okay so that's that's a balance in that equation for aluminium bromide plus chlorine giving aluminium chloride plus bromine. So that's it for now. Bye for now. <laughs>